Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 168. This episode is with the delightful Lindsay Thompson. She's an animator, puzzle enthusiast, cat mom, and just a really great hang. It was a blast getting to know her, and we talked about a ton of stuff. We talked about her dad moving her family from Florida to L.A. when she was two, how she originally went to college for fashion before randomly getting into animation, moving to New Zealand on a whim, the many amazing projects she's worked on, working at Rhythm and Hughes, Weta, ILM, and Disney before working on video games at Insomniac, the joys of having creative freedom, the differences between working on movies and video games, she gives great advice for up-and-coming animators, and so much more. She's incredible, and you're going to love her. So let's just get right into it, friends. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 168, with Lindsay Thompson. Theme song time! Yeah. Where in Florida? I was born in Florida. Were you? What part? Yeah, Jupiter. Oh, I'm in Naples. Okay. Yeah. The I was uh, West uh, Palm Beach Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. My parents grew up going to Juno Beach and oh, sweet. Uh, dad worked at the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater in Jupiter. Really? Yeah. What a small world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know exactly where Jupiter is. It's like two, two hours, a little over two hours, other coast and then up. Okay. Like two and a half. Roughly. Yeah. We just yeah. used to go back there like in the summers, which is not the best time to go to Florida, but that's when we <laughs> could go back when it, the kid, you know, we were in school. So, sure. uh, but we pretty much just went there every time. Really? How long were you in Florida? Till I was two. Okay. Okay. And then, and then we moved out to Los Angeles. So. Wow. Really? Yes. Yes. What, what made you move? Uh, dad wanted to be a stand up comedian. Cool. So, uh, yeah, so like I said, he, uh, after high school, had worked at the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater as a lighting guy. Sweet. And, uh, and he got the bug to like, kind of do comedy or act or write or something. So he packed up our whole family and drove us out uh, with a U-Haul and tried to make it, but he actually kind of through Bert a little bit, got hooked mm -hmm. up with somebody in Hollywood and uh, was writing pretty, pretty much off the what? bat and, and was a television writer and producer for 20 years. So, Dude, yeah, that's wild. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, he killed it. Yeah. That's awesome. What a dad. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So do you, is, is LA home in your head or do you think of Florida? How does that work? LA's home. Yeah. I'm a California girl. Our, our be, whole right? our whole family used to call us like the California girls. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're very LA. No, I mean, I grew up in the Valley. And sure. So I am a real Valley girl. Get it. Um, Get it. When, <laughs> when you live in Los Angeles and you meet people, uh, everybody asks where you're from. And I'm, I'm one of those rare people. I, I, I consider myself a native. Yeah, uh, for sure. But, but my con yeah, my consciousness began here. So there you definitely. go. That's cool. Did you like it? What's it like actually growing up in a place where it's mostly transplants? Uh, I mean, I guess when you grow up, you know, you have that whole town full of people that you knew your whole life. And then sure. I never really had my adulthood in Los Angeles didn't really begin until I moved out of the country and then came back. Mm, okay so I when I I went to school out here and right. then I and then I worked a little bit in LA but then I left so I never really got to have like an adult experience in proper Los Angeles and that's kind of when you start meeting everybody that's from somewhere else so, sure okay yeah. okay that makes sense I mean there's worse places to grow up from what I hear 
it was pretty nice. I mean, we didn't have snow days. That was always a thing in the movies. Sure. <laughs> like I, I, sw- I mean, you growing up in Florida, it's similar. My only two experiences have been like Florida and Los Angeles. So oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my no first snow. time, my first time actually seeing snow like fall from the sky was. Yeah like five years ago <laughs> and what was the reaction it was magical and everyone's like you're crazy this get, this, this is not fun after a while sure. and i'm like spinning in the snow i'm like yeah. it's like a movie everything is like a movie to me so yeah i'm the same way <laughs> i i grew up mostly watching movies like that was my main me source too. of entertainment isn't mm-hmm. it okay so most people i know like i was just talking to someone about this the other day they grew up watching tv and like this nice you watch this show i was like we just watched movies oh all okay the time. i did both for did sure you? okay yeah okay. yeah i was definitely a child that uh sat hours in front of the tv sure and sure. uh i don't know if my parents will be you know proud of that or whatever sure. but i i was always <laughs> i i mean it worked out like i i was always really interested in it i pop culture everything surrounding Same. that was like always my favorite thing me and my sister yeah and so we watched a ton of TV, but then my dad also was, we had like, we always had like a theater room in the house. So Ooh. he was an early adopter of laser discs. So awesome. we had, he had this massive laser disc collection Fantastic. and we, you know, it was the best quality and he had the projector and the screen. And so, yeah, movies were just a huge part of my life. So same. I'm yeah. so glad you said Laserdisc. I don't know anyone else who's yeah. experienced Laserdisc. It's like <laughs> movies used to come on records. Like what? Yeah, the they were huge. <laughs> and then, yeah, and you had to flip them sometimes. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was like, that was the that was the wave of the future was Laserdiscs. Yeah. And of some course. people still stand by them as being. I respect that. Really high quality. I, you know, I haven't had like a proper player and like stuff sure. to hook it up to look at them for a while so i can't really back that up but sure when you think of laserdisc what's the movie that comes to your mind oh god i know right ask the hard ones uh here. well i i'm the thing that's popping into my head right now uh-huh. is um the invasion of the body snatchers Ooh, of course because my it was my i remember when my dad bought that laser disc and we used to go and he'd always bring we like every week he'd come home with a few new ones and we'd always watch them and he brought that one home going this was the scariest movie when i was a kid he oh, goes no. i remember it terrifying <laughs> me and all this stuff so he put it on and i remember sitting in the room and watching it with him and we were laughing so hard because you could see like the zipper on the back <laughs> of the guy's costume and my dad was just like we were just laughing so hard it was yeah so i, sure. I have such a vivid memory of that moment but it was you know he had all the big you know the the Wizard of Oz 10 disc collection, oh, which yeah. I don't even know what was on them. You know, it was like <laughs> back then. And that's what I think I miss. And I'm sure you'll agree with me is like special features that yes. used to come on discs. Yes. And, and I think there's a really empty market for that in streaming. Yeah. Like, agreed. And when um recently Disney with all their series uh, has that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that behind that, the scene thing, yeah, that the, the, assembled the, the, or um, assembled, yeah. Gallery. I I love it. Like yeah, the, the assembled show. When I get to watch, it's like a behind the scenes featurette of that entire season, and yeah. I look forward to it so much. And I just wish there was more of that. I I miss that so much. Wholeheartedly agreed. That's been like my show is like finding out who was in that alien suit and how do I get to know them as a human being. <laughs> so much of mine. Yeah. So how how did you get started doing this? Uh, so it was six years ago. Now I've been doing it, mm-hmm. and it started as a way because I, I do acting during the day, and then okay. I work the survival job at night. And so it started out as like trying to find ways to make my own way into the industry, mm-hmm. and then it slowly became so much more. And yeah. around I want to say episode like thirty or so. I had someone on the show and we became like spirits aligned and we became yeah. best friends from strangers to best friends in an hour and a half. Yeah. And that like was, oh, oh, this is what I do. This yeah. is what it, and since then it's just, I don't know who keeps letting me talk to these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it was cool. Like wow. you reaching out, like it's, 
any sort of attention with any of these things, like stuff recently for me has been very new because it's only been in the past year or two that I've allowed any sort of online presence for myself. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I've been working in my job. If anybody's, li- I'm an animator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone actually listens to these shows. If they do, my <laughs> yeah. mom will. My mom's going to listen. Hey, Perfect. mom. Hey, dad. Hello, Mama Thompson. <laughs> I'm Brian. <laughs> um, I started in the games industry like the year of Gamergate. Oh, yikes. So I was like, mm, yeah, probably. I best. don't want it. I'm not going to go on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so I, I, I like I had an account forever. I used to follow like comedians and that was about it. Perfect. Um, that was the reason to be on Twitter for me. Sure. And uh, and then I started working with all these like really amazing women and yeah. in this last couple of years and they had this really cool online presence and they had like everybody was being nice to them and and yeah. it was kind of cool so i was like hey hey everybody yeah <laughs> i worked on this game too and then started posting some animation stuff and uh yeah and then like you know just a few posts that went a little bit viral and i had like i went from like two followers to like eight thousand followers and hell yeah six months. yeah i love it i love you it know. anything like that because I, I think i I'm pretty sure I became aware of you through Jennifer Hale. Yeah. And I think that's what did it. And then I was like, oh, and I, so like with my show, it's very, I always say it's a show about pretty much nothing. It's impossible to promote because I'm like, I'm just going to talk to a person that you might know their work, but I want to know them as a human being. It's not necessarily about a single project. Sure. And so typically before I ask anyone to come on, I'll follow them for a while and kind of get a vibe. Be like, is there something here? I feel like I connect with (laughs) because And I don't know what it was, but yeah. for some reason you agreed, which was cool. Yeah. Like, you, just, yeah. you seem really, really cool. And I would like to test <laughs> this you. theory. And here we are. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, any sort of Jennifer Hale uh, oh approval God. is like, good, is, you know, it's good as gold. Yeah. More so, I would even argue. She's one of yeah. the greatest human beings. She's so cool. Ever. The I best. actually, I actually didn't work with her closely personally sure. on on ratchet and clank but mm-hmm. it was kind of we kind of connected on twitter cool and and then she was like oh you know i was like hi like i'm i animate and i'm working with your voice and you know she knew sam mags who mm-hmm. was originally a writer on the project and all this stuff she was really involved and and then we just started following each other on Twitter. And then she was just really supportive on Twitter. And I remember when the project came out, we kind of did a big group Zoom with the company and they invited some of the actors and we were all talking and and it was just a love fest. It was like, oh, I'm yes. like, this was so wonderful working on the project and da, da, da. And I remember when I spoke up and was talking about something, I was like thanking, you know, the writers or whatever. And like Jennifer Hale was like, oh, Lindsay. And I was like, you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, she's like, I mean, she's a legend. Like yeah. it, it's so yeah. cool and, and truly kind and wonderful. And yeah. Yeah. Right there with you. Right. There I did, I did listen to her. Uh, you did not. About halfway through of her podcast it. with you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. Um, the, the, but, good feel. <laughs> yeah. She's she's cool for sure. She is. She is. All right. So you do like animation. You're a senior animator. I imagine that requires some artistic ability. Yeah. Were you, were you into art growing up as well? Or was this something you kind of fell into? Uh, it's a little bit of both. I, cool. I think growing up, nobody would have ever pegged me as being, this would be the job I ended up in. Sure. I, I was a little bit drawn to the creative types. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm very much left-brained, right? That's more logic and less creativity. Sure. I'm right-handed and left-brained. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely like logic comes natural to me. Math was always good, but I also, nice. uh, I just, as college age appro- approached and I had to make a decision, I was like, oh, I don't want to go to normal college. I don't sure. want to get a, I don't want to get a degree <laughs> in business business or English or communications mm-hmm. or, and I'm, I, I say that and I'm not trying to like crap on sure. those majors, but different just, people <laughs> it wasn't, I was like, I got to do so I, for a while. I played music. I played guitar. Hell yeah. I was like, I'm going to go to school for guitar, but I was never that good. And I yeah. was that dedicated. 
Right. I, it was more of, I realized as I was trying to think about going to school for it and learn more, I was like, I don't want to have to do this. I just yeah. want to do it. I feel um, you. So I decided in high school, I was like, well, what about like fashion? I like fashion. I'll, I'll go to fashion Ooh. school. And uh, so I, I wanted to go to FITM in Los sure. Angeles. And that was kind of, it's like a two-year program, but it's, it's kind of where you go. It's a big renowned fashion school. Right. My mom at the last minute was like, well, she's like, I really would love if you got a four year degree, you know, all that stuff. Of course. And she said, Otis has a fashion program, too. And they're very well known. And that's also in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, you know, think about it. I said, OK, I'll look into it. But it was more of like a bigger art school, like with different majors. Mm hmm. And I was like, I don't draw. I don't do this or that. <laughs> so I took some art lessons to make a portfolio to apply to the college. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> and they were so, I mean, I would, I, I think I still have them. They're, they're pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it I worked mean, though. It was it like, worked. yeah, well, it, it's also a private school that like wants your money. So sure. I, a little, a little bit of, uh, at first I felt really proud. And then like, I think it was somebody, my sister, somebody was like, yeah, they'll take anybody's money. <laughs> I, and I don't think it was my sister. She's <laughs> she's very nice. She probably wouldn't have said that. But um, sure. it was just like, oh, yeah. But anyway. Still counts. I'll give it to you. Yeah, I got Cheers. it. Yeah, I, I got in. Enjoy. So I went to Otis and your first year is just art. So you hmm. don't take your major. And it's not until the end of that year that you take like an elective related to your major. So I took a oh. fashion drawing class. And I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. It was just like, it was just like, make them skinnier and, yeah. you know, stretch them out. And like the program just like, I, I, I started to suggest like, oh, well, I'd, I'd really like to do costuming or mm -hmm. fantasy costuming. At the time, Lord of the Rings was very yeah. like, I was like, wow. Um, and they were like, no, we don't do that. Like, oh. no. <laughs> and then the digital media department, which was, who a lot of the people I hung out with, that was the major they were going into. So digital media oh. covered motion graphics, animation, visual effects, you know, whatever at the time. Sure. And I was like, oh, I really want to hang out with these people. And I don't know what I'm doing, but I guess I'll go into that major. And I just checked it off on the box when I had to start the next year. So I went into that major. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I had basically used computers. I grew up playing some computer games, but like mm -hmm. AOL and of course the uh, Badlands of the internet back then. Yeah, we had discs <laughs> with minutes on yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. I remember. I remember <laughs> Netscape. <laughs> yeah, like my sister would answer the pick up the phone and it would kick you off the internet. Um, yep. yep. That's, the, the internet booting up sound will forever be in yep. every every millennial's heart. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just started taking like kind of the core curriculum for that, which kind of covers everything in the beginning. You do like some 3D, you do some 2D, you do concept art, there's mm -hmm. other electives. And the first time I set a key on like a ball in After Effects and then like moved the timeline and set the second key and hit play and saw it move, I was like, <gasps> I was like, that's animation. <laughs> that's like Pixar. <laughs> right. Magic. I was like, wow. Oh, I get it now. Like in that instant, I understood it. Sure. And, um, and we had one 3d animation class and one 2d animation class. And I took both obviously as not a super skilled artist. Sure. I, I love the tedium actually of doing in-betweens. So like you draw every frame, like well, yeah. in, be in betweeners draw every frame in, in traditional. And I liked that. I liked like putting on some music and like sitting down and just drawing over and over and over again, slightly different. Sure. Um, but I, I was also like, I can't do this. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I took the 3D animation class and then I took it like four more times because it was the only one. So I took it every semester. And oh, sweet just dug into it and it was kind of one of those things where it was like oh I kind of have a skill for this and I didn't know I did and I just pushed and pushed and pushed and got independent studies and turned every class I had into an animation assignment and Sweet. and that was that so no it was not in my bones it was not in my blood like movies sure. were and all of that stuff mm -hmm. and acting was something I was always interested in sweet um, 
so doing like comedy and acting and improv and uh, like I did all that growing up. I took acting classes and fantastic. So to have that come back around and work for this job, like yeah. performing through other characters, because ultimately I, I never could have made it as an actor. Uh, well, you never know. Uh, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle the rejection. I, oh, yeah. I, it's. I take back what I just said. That's, yeah, it's all rejection. <laughs> it's all rejection. Well, my, you know, my dad was in the business. My sister was in casting growing up too. So I got to see like the real ugly Oof. side of a casting office and, and the process yeah. of that. And I was like, I can't do this. I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, so yeah, so, so, so in a roundabout way, getting to bring those acting skills and the performing stuff and all of that stuff that I love. And I get yeah. to work with actors now and I love actors. Yeah uh is awesome so it it's something I never imagined and it I don't know how it happened that's <laughs> awesome I yeah. love hearing stuff like that because it's like almost like a destiny kind of thing where like it was in you and then the thing gets put in front of you and it just clicks that's yeah awesome yeah it was cool yeah I mean I feel gosh I feel so fortunate like to sure. have somehow ended up in that space of being able to learn this stuff and being able to meet this person and that person and that job led to this job. And, you know, I mean, th that's how it is, I guess, but yeah, usually yeah. when it comes to the power of decision, that's the thing. It's all yeah. there. And you actually went for it and took these things, even if it was on a whim, then you stuck with it and put yeah. into work. I love that. I, d I, d I do a lot of things on a whim. I'm, I'm pretty good. I think you should. I, yeah. I, I, I believe in that. Yeah. So yeah, it's the way to go. Life's way too short not to. You can't be frozen in fear. You got to just take a, take a, take a step, take a, take yeah. a leap. Yeah. Wholeheartedly agrees. Even bad experiences make for good stories. Sure. And lessons, you know, and, le and life lessons. Yeah, exactly. There's no way to really lose as long as you survive. That's the key if yeah. you survive and to live to tell about it. Yeah. You're golden. Totally. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you remember your first, like, professional gig then because if you went to school for fashion and you left with the mind of animation yeah you remember the first time you're like oh I'm doing this for like a job job oh yeah it, it came very quickly after school um cool. yeah I graduated in 2007 and a month or two after that I was working at Rhythm and Hughes on Alvin and the Chipmunks <laughs> okay deep end <laughs> yeah. wow I might I, have heard of that movie yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, How? It, well, at school, um, mm -hmm. we used to have professional uh, industry people come and review our work. And really? yes, yeah, so we had like our senior thesis class. And at the end of the first semester and the second one, we got to show it to professionals. Cool. And they were professionals. I'm like, quote, tweeted. But they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're real professionals. That's invaluable. And it wasn't in my class, but in somebody else's thesis class, somebody was coming from Rhythm and Hughes, an animation director. Ooh. And we didn't have a ton of people doing 3D animation in our, in our um, class. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was like, I have to, I have to wait by the door and I have to stop this guy. Yes. So I, yes. so I, I waited until the class was over and he was walking out and I was like, uh, uh, uh excuse me uh <laughs> hi i'm an animator uh would you mind if i just real quick just real quick just showed you my reel and he was like oh yeah okay yeah 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 sure so i showed him my reel and you know he was very nice and i, I can't remember what that feedback was but i think i was like well he i don't think he's like pretending to like think this is okay sure but he told me about the apprenticeship program they had there. So they have an apprenticeship program where you come in, you train for like 12 weeks or something wow. like that. And then after that, uh, they tend to hire those people on and you go into production. So I applied and I graduated and I hadn't heard anything. So you have that like post-graduation like uh, you know, what am I going to do now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in my case, like very soon after I hear back on this um, apprenticeship and I was like, yeah. What? So I went and just like, it was crazy. And then it never stopped. 
after that. Hell yeah. <laughs> but see, again, it's you taking the initiative sure. to wait and get your stuff out. Like that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the magic that not a lot of people talk about enough, I think. It's very important. Yeah. It's very important. And human connections are important. Yes. If, if I'm going to tie that through again, my that one 3D animation class that I took about four times, mm -hmm. um, the teacher was Bobby Coddington, who is my animation director at Insomniac. Hell yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So, um, you know, somebody I knew from back in the day and reached out to later and was like, hey, you guys hiring? Sure. <laughs> At that point, had quite a resume and a, a reel at that point, but like just having those connections that you're like, hey, you, yeah. you want, will you uh, say something nice about me to sure. <laughs> <laughs> the people that are hiring? Yeah, it's a huge part. I mean, it's a huge part of any working environment mm. and career, but it's really important to like be a cool person and be a good person. You don't have to be the loudest or the you know, most talk, like you don't have to be that, but just, you know, don't be shitty. Yeah, for <laughs> real. It's so simple, but so true. Yeah. I, I watched, I, I, I read this book recently and there was a thing in it that kind of changed the way I see a lot of things. Cause it's all, they say it's all who, you know, right. Yeah. And in the book, they said, I would argue it's who wants to know you. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, you're absolutely right. That, and then, it, yeah. It's wild. It's wild how that works. It does make sense because right? it, you can know a ton of people. And especially when you when you live in a place like Los Angeles and you go out in certain parts of town, there's very much a who are you? Who are you? Mm -hmm. Can you do something for me? You know, who you know or whatever. Yep. But again, in my experience, all of my good, well, a lot of my good fortune has come from being the kind of person that I think people want around yeah. that you want to work with, because it, it's at the end of the day, you, you are with these people more than most people in your life, yeah. even, even your partners that you live with, mm -hmm. uh, and you're interacting more on a daily basis with them. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to be cool. Like it is, it is. it's not, so overlooked. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and I'm, I'm a, I, I come off as extroverted, but I'm actually quite introverted, but I can, mm. uh, I can communicate well with people. I don't mind, uh, public speaking or there you go. Uh, introducing. Yeah. I'm like the one of those weird people like, I love public speaking. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Somebody does. You know? And I'll be the person. So respect, respect you. People yeah. like you are needed because people <laughs> like me are tired. <laughs> <laughs> no you're 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 uh you're, you're an actor and and that's part of it right it's public yeah. speaking <laughs> yeah yeah it's there are worse ways worse ways to handle things yeah <laughs> rhythm and hues though that's so what did you do on alvin and the chipmunks then i was an animator i was an associate animator so i just did um i did scenes with the chipmunks i did some what? chipmunk dancing and what some, yeah you just the way it's pretty much worked at almost every job I've had is you get assigned shots. So you kind of okay. take, you animate the whole shot. You do all the, all the character performance and then goes through pipelines of, you know, then people putting the fur on them and simming their little t-shirts or whatever they have on and sure. light, somebody lights it and somebody, you know, composites it into the into the live action plate and, and it's stuff that I don't know anything about, but I just make, oh. I just make a move. There so, you go. So are yeah. they like, are they just random shapes when you're doing it? Or like smooth polygon chipmunks? Like, what do you uh, see when you're working on it? So what I like to describe it as is uh, it's, mo it's more like puppetry than anything. People, a lot of people, okay. when I talk about animating, will go, oh, so you draw in the computer. And I go, no, I don't draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Sure, um, same. But it is like puppetry. So basically you have a 3D model in your program that you can actually pan around and look at so it's it's modeled typically the ones we work on are a little bit lower resolution than mm -hmm. what ends up in the final project like they don't have their fur on them gotcha. we're, we're, we're working for uh, speed here mm -hmm. so we can pan around it the way i describe it is like let's say i wanted to animate a, a you know blowing a kiss so i would grab my character in the 3d scene and i'd start 
you know, picking controls on it. There's a, there's a skeleton inside of it with little points that you can pick and pull. Oh, okay. And you, and you pose it out. So I'm like posing, you know, my hand to my mouth. Right. And then in a timeline, like I said, with that first ball that I, I, I hit it. And then I went through the timeline, I moved the ball. And then in 3D, you hit play and it, it interpolates. Sure. So if, I, so if I were to blow a kiss, I would hold this pose here. I'd go ahead in time and then I'd pose that. Ah, uh, it's like keyframing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's it's just posing in 3D rather than doing a keyframe drawing. Sure. The computer does interpolate, but unfortunately, Fantastic. it doesn't look very good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if I hit play, it would just like, it, it would go like this. Right. You know, it would just play. So then I got to go back and I got to add a breakdown to that. I got to add like a, a pull right. and a drag on the hand and the fingers come last and, oh. and I got to do the face and then I got to do that. It, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's posing and it's, yeah. tedi it's tedious still. Sure. It's a little less tedious, I think, than drawing all those drawings, but Fair. Um, yeah, it's a lot of, it's interesting. It takes weeks to do seconds. That, oh God. Man. And when so, you and when you have to animate a chipmunk singing, you, oh, yeah. listen, you have to listen to that clip over and oh, over no. and over and over. Yeah. Oh, talk about sounds that give you PTSD. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm just imagining that. That's a lot. Yeah, it's cool though, it, and you get better at it and faster I bet. at it, and you start I bet. making better decisions. And every style is different, and every pro every new project is a new thing. And yeah. Yeah. How much input do you get into like the, like, does the shot, will it say like chipmunk blowing a kiss or like how much freedom do you get in the midst of what you're given? It totally depends. Um, so if we take that for an example, uh, visual effects is different than feature animation where everything oh. is CG because visual effects, they actually shoot on a real camera, the live action background. Right. So if this were the, if, if, if this image of me on this camera, like going like this, and I wanted to add in a little character dancing next to me, mm -hmm. I would be constrained to this camera. Well, which you kind of always are in right. animation, but I would be constrained to this camera. And then also the timing of the shot and, 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 and sometimes they'll have like actors, like, you know, pretend like the chipmunk just punched you. So then the sure. actor on the stage is like going, Ugh. And so then I need to time my 3D animation to that. So sometimes it's very constrained because we're, we're at the at the mercy of what is in that plate. Right. But when it comes to like 3D animation, uh, like feature animation, like Disney or something like that, mm -hmm. um, you can make probably, you have a little bit more freedom with your acting choices, but you generally are either given a storyboard, you're given a script, with direction in it so mm -hmm. you are kind of you're given a guide you're not just like do something sure. yeah. Som yeah. sometimes sometimes they hand you something and they go well he just do something you know do, sure. do something do something cool have him do something cool um which is yeah half the time and that's that's cool but also scary sometimes Ooh. you're like just tell me what to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> um do you, do you have a go-to like when somebody says just do something you're like i'm gonna make them do a flip uh, you know what? Flips are always good. Like, Can't go wrong. It depends on the character, but yeah, like if there's like when I I worked on um, uh, Transformers, one of the oh, Transformers what? three. <laughs> Optimus Prime, pretty much when he's not like in action. Yeah. He, he nods and points. Yeah. So you do a does. lot of like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's all that. So you kind of per project you 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 kind of have some on model uh, actions of certain characters. Um, when I animated some like little owl characters, we had one that was uh, really kind of over the top and Carti was a little more spastic. So you, oh, yeah. you'd, you'd get to do more fun stuff with him. And then there was one that was a little more naturalistic and it's, it's, it's per character. I did, I did an Einstein bobblehead. And so you oh. just, you do their little performance. They like come to life and then you add that little, little bobble. bobble on top of everything. <laughs> It's super fun. That's awesome. Yeah. What what programs were you using when you started? Maya. Ah, uh, people um, still use Maya, right? I I still use Maya today. Wow. Yeah, it's been it's pretty much the industry standard. At least yeah. some some at least something based off that. Some studios mm. have their own proprietary software that is based off of 
Maya, so you can use it if you know Maya. Sure. Um, but yeah, Maya is kind of what we what we use. Makes sense. Has it gotten easier or more difficult as the technology has like jumped? I think easier. I mean, yeah. there's ideally. Yeah, you'd hope. <laughs> no, it's just getting worse every year. Yeah. There's no buttons every time. <laughs> they keep taking buttons away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's getting easier. They're adding buttons. There's okay. uh, and and of course the people that you work with, um, you know, you work with these really talented people who you could say, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if if we had a button that could kind of automate this or help us do that or, yeah. and then like, sometimes they make them and, oh. and that's really cool. <laughs> and they good. know how to, they know how to program. And I don't know anything about that. Um, wow. So it's getting easier. There's like, there's just things that make my life easier that exists now that, that didn't used to. So that's gotta be nice. I usually find out about them like five years later yeah. though. And everyone's <laughs> like, what have you been doing this whole time? I'm like, I was doing it manually. <laughs> Putting away so. your flip books. You're like, uh, don't mask. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How long were you at Rhythm and Hughes? I was there a couple of years, a nice. couple of years, right nice. out of school. And then on a, on a whim, like I've go. done, before and I then? I sent an application to Weta in New Zealand, oh, oh, and I got close. and I got a call and I got I got a job offer. I did an interview and wow, on a whim, New Zealand, yeah, good for what's it like? It's like uh, top of my bucket list now since it, going to Ireland to just <laughs> Middle Earth. It's Middle Earth. It is Middle Earth. The oh. South Island is really Middle Earth. That's yeah. like the the majestic, you know, oh. fjords. And I don't think there are fjords there, but like I don't know the difference. The, the sounds <laughs> they call them sounds and and mountains and meadows God. and uh, it's it's spectacular. Although I will say it is a, a incredible place to visit. Mm -hmm. Living there was like a bit of another story. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was such a wonderful experience. Like. It was so cool having never lived away from home. Yeah, I bet. And then moving pretty much the furthest place I could go before I started like heading back again. Yeah, it's on the other <laughs> side my, of the planet. Yeah, my dad cried so I much bet. when I told him I got that job and was going to go. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, but um, it was a very, it's a very friendly place to move, obviously. Sure. Like, really, really wonderful kind people especially coming from los angeles where if you're walking down the street and you make mm -hmm. eye contact that's a sign of aggression yeah if, <laughs> if you're if you're in new zealand and you don't say hi back they're like what what's wrong with are you okay yeah. like <laughs> uh everybody was just so nice um but living in Wellington, which is at the very tip of the North Island, gotcha. Uh, the 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 lowest tip, the low lower tip of the North Island. Um, mm -hmm. It was very cold, Oof. very windy. Ooh. They call it Windy Wellington, and the ah. winds are coming from Antarctica. It's the southerly winds from ah. Antarctica. It's very cold. Uh, lots of hail, lots of rain, and gray, and coming from sunshine yeah actual uh, perfect weather <laughs> year round um it was a gorgeous day gorgeous october day today uh-huh i bet uh is it october no it's november yeah. it's a gorgeous <laughs> november day it felt like october that's how nice it was what day is it yeah <laughs> i have no um, idea <laughs> uh it was rough it was I rough bet. for me i i i i i was hard yeah i cried the first time i saw the sun after like nine months of being there Ooh, I, just burst, I, I just burst into tears. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> oh, and, and the ozone layer there is different. The sun is so dangerous there. So like Ooh. the sun came out and I like ran outside and then I was sitting outside for like 10 minutes and my skin started to peel. Ah, it's crazy. Yikes. So I'm there with you. I get sunburned from opening the fridge. Yeah. It's no are, are you are you Irish? You said you yes. went to Ireland. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I've, got, I've got the orange beard. Yeah, uh, nice. My love of potatoes. What other racial <sighs> stereotypes can we fit into here? Gosh, it's, I love potatoes. I mean, the sun. I I just I just realized the other day that the potato is the Meryl Streep of vegetables. Oh, so right? um, so uh... there's, there's wisdom here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so diverse and yes, in its, in its so much roles. Range. So and much it's range. always good. 
you know, (laughs) you can't, you can't screw up a potato. You can't, you can't, (laughs) you know, you just, and if you do mash it, yeah, there's insurance built into the vegetable, throw some cheese on it. That's right. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I, so what did you do at Weta then? Because if you're saying it was that late, Lord of the Rings was over. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was a while ago. Uh, it was Avatar. Oh, and, yeah. you know, I might have heard of that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> and when I went there, it hadn't been announced. So I didn't know what I was working on. I knew that I was what? working on an un- unannounced James Cameron project. Which could so, be anything. And Yeah. And at the time, there had been some leaks or he had made a comment or something that it, it would be, it would have aliens in it. And so that's oh. all I knew. So, like, I was picturing something completely different when I went there. <laughs> sure. An abyss sequel. (laughs) Exactly. I was picturing something ethereal and like underwater and it not like a humanoid or anything. I was picturing like the abyss. Sure. And then I get there and one of the first things I see is like there's that sequence where they're the avatars are on the base and they're like in their Navi bodies, but they're like Uh playing basketball. Oh yeah. That little court. I was like, what the hell is this movie? (laughs) And then I saw more. Uh Aha. Okay. But it, yeah, it was, um, it was pretty cool because the whole time we had no idea how that movie was going to do. I, I remember calling my parents after I started and I was like, I think I'm working on something. It's pretty crazy. Like, it's really cool. <laughs> I, I think, I think it might be good. I, you know, sure. So people might see it. People maybe. might watch this. It might flop. I don't know. <laughs> um, wow. yeah. what, what shots did you do in that? Like, who'd you work on? Was it, did you work on the Navi? Yeah, yeah, you Ooh. you pretty much work by sequence. So there was just okay. different sequences. I, I will say it was a ton. I mean, it, obviously that was mocap, and mm-hmm. so motion capture. You're getting a lot of the data from the actors that perform on the stage. Sure. We obviously had to animate. You know, you have to do a ton of cleanup. That stuff never comes in clean. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to blow it away. Sure. You have to animate all the tails and the ears and the things Ooh. they can't capture. So I did wow. a ton of tails. Really. Um, to the point where the anim director really liked that some tales I did in a shot and was like, could you just do like 5,000 frames of tail stuff? And then we can hand that to our animators and they can just plug it in and slide it and see something. Pin the tail on the Navi. Pretty much. I get it. So I did a lot of the tales in the third act, I think. Wow. Uh, (laughs) And then so specific. Yeah, I know. I love it. And probably the most iconic shot that I did in that was the when the horse, the dire horse, was on, uh-huh. on fire in slow motion. What? Like, yeah. 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 It was a six-legged horse. That was a new thing. So, man, how long did that take you? I don't remember, but I, I do know that when you when you animate an animal that has more legs than it <laughs> should have, sure, you do the regular legs first. Smart. And then you layer on that extra set gotcha. you know like you don't try to figure out the math Smart. On, the, on the three you sure the, the normal and then you, you know so, Sp- so spice was... it up a little yeah okay okay what's yeah. the key to a, a, a tail a navi tail oh boy well the tails they were the the, the direction was they're they're actually quite stiff at the base so okay. they're not like little wiggly wavy tails they're, uh-huh. they're they're pretty stiff but the okay. very end almost like kind of the end of a cat tail is the most kind of active part gotcha. um, so okay. it was kind of bigger broader moves here and then it would get a little bit more movement here and then if they were agitated they would kind of go up and be more active and oh. then if they were passive you know they would kind of sit down and and you just try to keep it real subtle but oh it's so cool i love that I love the amount of detail that <laughs> oh nobody God. realizes. I animated a hero. We call it a hero, meaning it's going to be very focused. Like a camera. main shot. Yeah. I animated a hero raindrop on Ooh. Avatar. That was that was something that was going to be right in the foreground and like yeah. part of some scene. Like that's the detail that goes into these things. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, like that's my raindrop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like it, your it, kid. Is, it is funny the first time you go to the 
a movie that you worked on or something and you're in the theater with your parents like I take my parents like to Alvin or awesome. you know I did an incredible Hulk after that Whoa. and, and this the whole time I'm like okay mom I'm gonna hold your hand and I'm gonna squeeze your hand when my shot's on the screen because <laughs> I don't want you to I don't want to go that's my shot because then my mom would go huh yeah and then she'd look <laughs> back and it would be gone she so it. I'm like don't look at me I'm gonna squeeze your hand and that's my shot so you have to like do all that but that's amazing <laughs> and the incredible hulk that would have been the ed norton one mm -hmm. i went to the midnight premiere of that movie oh really i did i quite enjoyed that movie a lot uh, a, a lot of people did that yeah. i will say that project more than anything has is the reason i have the career i have interesting that did you work one, on hulk yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah 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 lots really? of really yeah that whole the, there's a whole sequence when the guys uh the Tim Roth characters like coming after him with the sound thing in that oh, yeah. in that park. Uh -huh. I, I did a lot of that stuff. A lot of him really? running and like you Before know he like gets punted into a tree. <laughs> yep, and like the slashing with the metal shields and yeah. And that movie did have mocap, but we blew most of it away. Like really? I actually got to keyframe the Hulk. We we did secondary on the motion uh, on the muscles and what? you actually animate the flex. There's like flex controls. So when he was like tightening, you'd like turn those on. And so you'd see striations. What? And then if they, you know, if he like jiggled, you'd like get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so that's so cool. So having that on my demo reel, mm -hmm. like is the reason Weta talked to me. And then after Weta, uh, that's the reason this studio, it, it just like. It snowballs. That, yeah. That project really, uh, put a lot of people's confidence in me wow and rightfully so, so. the movie's awesome <laughs> yeah it's so good yeah. yeah was there when you're working on something like that so like specifically the hulk because the eric banna one had come out before mm -hmm. and it was what it was yeah and then, you know, <laughs> big baby hulk <laughs> you know yeah, yeah yeah his dad's a tornado uh but then this one comes around did you have to keep in mind how the hulk was animated in a prior iteration versus now like for reference of ways that you can grow like uh, is that a thing we certainly looked at it mm -hmm. you know just as reference at least to see kind of you know some hulking out or whatever but sure. our our style was definitely different and it was yep. more real realistic yeah um so it wasn't super important to our production mm -hmm. um it was it was held up as like this is not quite what we're making like we're not right. doing as much of like you know he's like not as big and not as sure. all this stuff so more sinewy more yeah muscle. a little bit a little bit more bodybuilder yeah uh and and we had a guy who worked in our rigging department who was kind of built like the hulk and oh, sweet real sh kind of short and stocky and he was like he would he would shoot reference for us we'd be like okay oh, in, this, cool. in this scene because i couldn't shoot my own i mean it was literally me going like ah, you yeah. know i <laughs> like it didn't work i tried but i i moved to my body doesn't move like that so You're too agile i'm too agile yeah i got you i got I, you i'm sorry i'm just so yeah. agile <laughs> yeah. and i tried to shoot reference for like the running shots my run no that did not go into the hulk so <laughs> he's got a little more weight to him yeah you know? so so this guy like would shoot reference for us and he, it looked so great like his, the weight was right the the body composition was right and he and he like would act like he would yeah. get in and go like <sighs> like he'd really go crazy for the camera and it was super cool so we used him a lot that's awesome <laughs> wow yeah and that was where was that was that in that was at rhythm and hughes so that was before i went to weta so i okay. did a few projects at rhythm and hughes i did alvin mm. and incredible hulk i did night at the museum too which oh sweet which had the little bobbleheads that one was fun because there was just such a crazy variety of stuff it was like all the things sure. that came alive so you had those i did like a giant octopus and you did little floating statues and a ballerina statue and sweet yeah so that one was cool just for the variety gotcha and then you went to new zealand and that was when they're like here's avatar uh -huh. okay okay so then when did you come back what made you come back um i well i didn't want to stay in new zealand any longer Understandable. i was you just ready to fall a little i was 23 so this oh. was this was like 13, like three years ago oh thir 13 years ago uh <laughs> and uh that's crazy um Dying but in. 
I was just like, you know, I was, I was free and I was like, I'm going to go, I should get this all out of my system or yeah. something, you know, like I didn't, I, 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 I wanted to take advantage of it. So after that, I went to Australia and I did um, Legend of the Guardians, the Zack oh, Snyder owl movie. Love that movie. So Do you? I, oh my I've, God. This year I have found out that people loved that movie and I had no, I assume that no one will ever know what that movie really? is. <laughs> and everyone's like, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see a storm, I think of baggy wrinkles. Oh. Every, it's that ingrained. Cause that's what the, <laughs> that's what the crazy owl called the storm. He's like, it's full of baggy wrinkles. And I was like, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't even remember. That's how ingrained that movie is. That's the, cool. What is it? The guardians of Gahul. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, I know this movie. It's yeah. very good. It was cool. It's beautiful. And so like pretty. the stuff on my reel is so epic because it's like that Zack Snyder, like bullet time yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're just like Phew. owls in armor. Sign oh, me up. Oh my God. It was so, yeah, it was pretty cool. And that's like one of those jobs you show up and you're like, all right, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> this okay. Owls, owls in armor. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. I don't know. Yeah. I've never, I've never animated an owl. So you, you know, you kind of look at, what everybody else has already kind of done on the project and you look at some real footage of owls and you try to get you know those little owl things in there but they also have to be like talking and oh, so yeah. um so that was yeah that was wow another project um Which and then after, yeah it was cool um and then i i uh and then i got um I wanted to come back to the US. Well, I was mm -hmm. supposed to go to London, a job fell through. And at the same time, ILM had reached out to me. Oh, uh, get it. So I applied. So so I, I actually told them on the phone, I already have a job, uh, but thank you. Sure. And then that job fell through. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> actually. <laughs> and I, it, luckily it was like within the same week. So awesome. um, I was like, hey guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This fell through. Can I please, please interview? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I interviewed and I got hired to go uh, to San, San Francisco. So I got to yeah. come back to California. My parents were very happy. Fantastic. And, um, and I went uh, to work on Avengers. Oh, dude. Yeah. Was it, did you work in the Hulk? Uh, probably. Yeah. I yeah. can't even remember. <laughs> I, uh, I think so. I, I think I was mostly doing like, that is one project that I completely didn't grab anything that I worked on after. And now it's lost <laughs> to the, to a black hole in my brain. I come in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what I did. I think, I know I did a lot of like those, um, there was that, I, I don't know what anything is. I didn't know who, what the Avengers was at <laughs> sure. the time. And, uh, the, you know, those like big metal Leviathans and yes. then the little minion guys that were yeah, on yeah. like little gold cruisers. Uh -huh. I, do those have a name? I do you know? think they're called the Chitari. That sounds right. Yeah, that but sounds right. I'm wrong all the time. No, no, so no. I think you're right. I'll that take sounds... the brunt just in case. No, no, no. That sounds right. <laughs> I think. Um, the so big I ones are it... Leviathans. I know that. Yeah, I did. A, I did. Uh, I think I did quite a bit in those sequences. I definitely did like some Thor digi doubles. I think I touched Sweet. Iron Man a couple times. Wow. Maybe didn't work on the whole. I, I, maybe I did. Um, but Is yeah. there like a list? Like you go in and then you just pick like, okay, I'm like taking tabs off a recreational. Center no, lessons. wouldn't that be like, cool? <laughs> <laughs> how, do they, how do they assign shots? How does that work? So you, when you come in, like when I got onto the project, then mm -hmm. you it depends on the studio, but typically you're on somebody's team. So there's leads. Got it. So you'll have like four or five leads and then you're on their team. So whatever missions, missions, I'm talking game speak right now. Yeah. <laughs> sequences, uh, whatever sequences they get doled out, then they would assign within their team. So they Got kind it. of, you know, they'll cast the shots to you to your strengths or your you know whatever oh, cool. or if if you go like oh i like i would i'm dying to do iron man you know they'll usually mm -hmm. go out of their way and oh, try to cool. find an iron man shot for you to do and all that stuff but um so yeah it kind of gets cast out to you by a lead gotcha okay and like for for a shot what exactly is a shot it's not like a single frame or is it it's not a single no. frame. It's, it's like, it's like a, you know, a cut in a movie. It's like shot, gotcha. 
shot one, shot two, different camera. It's Got basically it. when okay. the camera cuts. So you'll do the, just that single shot. Got it. Sometimes you'll get a sequence of shots because it makes more sense for you to kind of carry the animation through all of it. Sure. Um, Make sure the momentum but, carries crossed. Makes sense. Yeah. But that's also part of our job is to keep things consistent. So it's something right. that we're, we're not like, uh, it's not super difficult for us to do. Um, mm -hmm. But I think when in film, you kind of sometimes will get like two or three shots in a row. You get a little chunk so that you can cool. carry that through. When a digi double, is that like the replacing of the faces or like the bodies when they get thrown through stuff? It could be either one. Um, oh. But yeah, digi doubles are typically like when it could not be done by a real human being or it's it. interacting too closely. Like I did a shot, I have a shot on my reel from Transformers where it's like Shia LaBeouf running out of a building and jumping onto one of the transformers and then getting like flung uh -huh. it's all it's all cg so oh. you, you get a little shia labeouf rig yeah <laughs> and you and you and you you know you animate him doing what what the stunt person could not safely or realistically do oh uh, okay is there is there a secret to that like when doing digi doubles because they're human beings yeah but um also not yeah also, yes. it, it's definitely keep it as realistic as possible you don't want to kind of do anything that's superhuman sure um unless so, they are superhuman unless they are superhuman <laughs> unless it's like spider-man or some, some humanoid character that can do superhuman things sure um but yeah it's all about realism and that's something that i think i probably that's what i'm better at is doing mm -hmm. something grounded and real sure um because there's a lot of real life reference for that uh good when point. you do when you do something fantastical it's a lot more sure up with something you know which like an owl yeah like a talking like a talking owl yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but it's always you know it's it's a it's a fun challenge and digi doubles can be very difficult for some people. Sure. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of real world, correct weight mm. and movement to everything. And that, that sometimes is, is hard to get hard to get right. Cause you've definitely sure. like everybody's seen some in movies and you're like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> like, like the, like the mate that matrix scene where like it becomes like a hundred agent Smiths and it's like, Arr. yeah, <laughs> but it's cool still, but it's like, okay, sure. That's cool. But also those people are related to Gumby. <laughs> those like are Gumby that's... people. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's like a thing. So. Okay. Okay. Oh, so wait, when you're, animating an owl talking does it have mm -hmm. feathers when you see it there is we did have to we i think we initially would typically animate without the feathers turned on because it would kind of bog down oh the computer a bit because it was just more right. geometry like and stuff but uh we would always have to do a feather pass at least we would have mm. like representative volumes of where these feathers would be so that we knew not to like you know penetrate something sure. on the wing so have it like splicing between but we other. we definitely had i feel like on the wings we had rows of feathers that we actually animated um by hand oh. so and then and then the rest of it was like simmed uh, gotcha we, so okay okay yeah 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 how cool is ilm though huh oh so cool i've been twice and it's yeah magical it, it's super magical it, it definitely the most magical place i've ever walked into so they call it industrial light and magic. It was magic. So specific. Uh, and like so cool because on every level too, when you work there too, you can kind of like wander. So yeah. there's just history everywhere. There's like cool props everywhere. Mm -hmm. In the basement, there was like <gasps> the miniatures. Uh, there was like all the miniature sets from like it, the one in particular that I was so excited about was Death Becomes Her. There was what? a miniature of the theater from the very beginning of the movie. What? And like they just keep that stuff, but they find places to put them. I don't know. So wild. Cool. Yeah. I, I remember seeing the hook from Hook. Yeah. And I was like, I'm a different man now. I was. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very formative moment in my it life. It was. It was. There was. Uh, my life is before hook and after hook <laughs> pre-hook post hook yeah <laughs> i for me it's the vigo painting from oh yeah Ghostbusters. full size uh, on the wall i was like dude it's so yeah. cool yeah yeah it's nuts i'm not like as much i see you have star wars stuff uh, yeah, everywhere it's, behind it's, you <laughs> it's kind of my jam a little and i'm like i 
I can take or leave Star Wars. That's okay. I'll like it enough for both of us. Yeah, you got it covered. So yeah. Star Wars um, and Lord of the Rings are my. I'm yeah. I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. That was definitely yeah. something that was huge in my wanting to be an animator and sure and Jurassic Park, of course. Yeah, of course, of so, course. That's yeah. so. How long were you at ILM? Um, I was there on and off for a couple years. Cool. I I did Avengers and then. You know, the thing about working in VFX is there's a, there's lulls in, in sure. work. And when you're a contractor, they can't always keep you on. So they're like, well, you're usually really busy in the winter because you're working on all the summer, the big summer blockbusters. Oh, sure. So they, they were like, well, we can't promise you anything, but we should be gearing up again in like six months or something and mm -hmm. I had been moving so much I'd been moving country to country I was like paying sure. ta taxes in three countries at one point Ooh. and I was so tired of moving I bet so I took a, a six month um uh fun employment sweet what I called it a little sabbatical <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, Good. I, I've never done it since, but oh, I'm so glad I did. Like, it yeah. was so cool. I, 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 and it wasn't it that long ago, but yet my rent was good in San Francisco. I was able to pay my rent and like live off of unemployment. Get it. And I had like some money in savings, but like I never had to touch it. And, sure. Smart. And I, it, it was like, it was so amazing. So then they, I was actually, waiting to hear from them like the six months was coming up and I was kind of like all right I should probably work again yeah. <laughs> and uh and they're like well we're just not ready and I was like shit yeah um, <laughs> so I was like trying to find some work in San Francisco and uh Tippett was hiring so oh, sweet. I went and interviewed at Tippett which um was hiring at the time for Ted Mm. and I was like a teddy bear movie but he yeah. but he but he yeah. purses yeah. <laughs> um and so I got a job offer there but then ILM called me back like that week before I of course uh, as they do as, <laughs> as everything in do. my career has happened <laughs> somebody called um that's right and uh, you need to have a it, week buffer period now for it, any opportunity. I know it was so <laughs> it, it was just so much closer to where I lived. And I wouldn't have I would have had to commute over the bridge, which mm. if, if you know, San Francisco is not something you want to yeah. do. Yep. And uh, and so I went back there and I did the Transformers Transformers three. And so that mm. was that that my total stay there was kind of over a period of two or two and a half years. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love how I love how many places you've been and worked with and done in such a like relatively short amount of time. <sighs> yeah. It was wild. It was wild. When I when I look back at the amount of times I moved in those yeah. years, it's, Yikes. it's pretty crazy. That's You're a strong little, person, Lindsay. That's my little kitten back there, by the <gasps> what's, way. What's his name? Minnie. Her name is Minnie. Minnie. That's her beautiful. That's her tree house. Her castle. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so well and then and then the opportunity that came after that was disney Ooh. And i was like and by oh, then I, pinnacle of animation i mean had to do it disney and what'd you do a, uh wreck it ralph Ooh, ah i a little, see a bridge here a little bridge <laughs> i see it okay yeah. okay uh, so i actually went in as a crowds animator i took a i oh, took sweet. a step back I mm -hmm. took a step back because I that was the role that they were willing sure. to offer me and Disney was very exciting. So I went of course. and it was it was tough. I bet it was tough. It was a tough place to work. Sure. Uh and intimidating and overwhelming. Um and yeah, and that was the first time I was ever not asked to stay on. Ooh. You know? Not like in a like you're fired kind of way, sure. and like a we're we're gonna lay off some of you and we're gonna keep some of you, and that right. happened, and that was like and it devastating. Was an intense, it, was, it was an intense production, and it was devastating, mm. and in the end, very thankful for it because sure. I ended up in a much better place. But yeah, that was like that many years in. It it's it's crazy there, and yeah. The talent there is wild, and uh, I bet this, this little visual effects girl, I guess, 
<laughs> I don't know. It, it, it was, it was a tough schedule. And, and I remember being very burnt out after working. Ah, uh, makes sense. But, wow. um, so then there, was from to, there to games. No, I went to Sony in Vancouver. Oh, sweet. And that was the last film project I did. That was Smurfs oh. too. I ended oh, my film sweet. career where it began back. Alvin and the Chipmunks ended at Smurfs. Perfect. So. Full circle, <laughs> a big bow. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was fun. I mean, all those projects are super fun. They're little character. I bet. Yeah. My main forte on that one was Papa Smurf. I, the best I, Smurf. Any, any kind of quiet emotional scene with Papa Smurf was like, get it. That's my, that's my bread and butter. So that's awesome. So I did that. And then I was finally like, I want to come home. Sure. Understandable. <laughs> understand um so many moves and that was when i reached out to bobby coddington who is my teacher in school now a- animation director at insomniac games wow and he like that one week buffer thing we're talking about i was like hey yeah. how do you like insomniac he's like we're hiring right now like send me your stuff this week and i sent it that week and like a week later i flew down i did an interview i took a sick day and flew to smart. los angeles smart uh, and I interviewed and they hired me and it was a staff position and it was my first staff position in my entire career. Wow. That's so cool. And it's been almost nine years now. Wow. I so. love that. It was like you started there and then you had to go and like have to. your adventures and like mm-hmm. build up all the skills and everything to come back. And then, oh, that's so cool. You're the prodigal, a, Lindsay. It was a the <laughs> prodigal daughter. Return. That's right. No. My, my parents very happy, very happy to have me back in LA. I'm very happy to be back in LA. I bet. Um, and and the job has been awesome. That's so, so cool. Is it? How is it different? Because it's a it's a it's a different industry from games to movies. It is. Yeah. Is the art different? Like what you do? How different is it? The actual practical things that I do like animation wise is mm-hmm. is one to one. I mean the actual the actual animation skill of it all, it's yeah. it's all the same. But there is technical differences and mm-hmm. uh, obviously there's now gameplay animation as well as cinematic animation. So cinematic animation, oh. which is which is the cutscenes, yeah, is almost exactly like film production. You're gotcha. cre- creating an edit, you have cameras, you have layout, you animate the scene. It's played self-contained sure and 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 that's the same but gameplay animation is very different it has to oh it's a puzzle that never ends it's a piece of okay this character can walk forward but now they can walk they need to walk turn left walk turn right walk turn left to a stop walk turn right to a stop walk turn 180 and so on and so on and so on yeah so that was new because you can make a pretty animation in Maya, but it's all about how you break it up, how it ties together, how these pieces mm. fit together. So you get your first awakening when you start doing some gameplay animation. You're like, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's not as simple as just making it look pretty. It's, it, it's so much more. What I love about it is that it's such an iterative process. And mm-hmm. it's, it's such a uh, problem to be solved. And that goes yeah. back to like the logic of, yeah. of everything. And I coming here, getting into games, uh, which I do work in cinematics now. Awesome. But I have done, you know, gameplay. I did open world on Spider-Man. Ooh, sweet. And so getting to kind of figure out how the pedestrians move, move through the city, how, you know, what things they do, their little vignettes and all that fun stuff. Loops. Sure stuff like that um my brain just got reignited again like getting to like figure stuff out again yeah um it was very much less of a here's your shot this is what's in the shot and then hand your shot off right somebody's gonna do it this is like a designer and a writer and an animator get into a room there's a problem how are we gonna solve it Wow. And so it's just so much problem solving and creative. Sure. Like uh, more involved. Experimentation. It's so collaborative. 
Wow. So uh, every, you know, figure, just getting to figure stuff out. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Is really fun. Brainstorm with buddies. There's nothing better. Lots of brainstorming. And, uh, you know, we do, we work on these really amazing, like AAA games now, you know, we, yeah, it's with the Ratchet and Clank series and with Spider Man and (laughs) now, you know, Spider Man 2 that we're working on. It seems like these are these big blockbuster kind of corporate whatever, but it's like, it's us. It's like yeah. insomniacs, like getting into a room, a, now a Zoom room, yeah, and and thinking of things that would be cool. Oh, I love that. And it's so cool. And we're fans, and we're yeah. and and we we consider, you know, the game design is 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 based around the player experience right and that's really cool to like think about well what what would i like or what would they like or yeah this would be cool what feels good what what feels the most satisfying and what's what would be surprising here and what would be interesting and it's it's just so i mean i've I've been here almost nine years now which you know speaks speaks to the the quality of life and yeah you know and creativity that i get to it, it reignited i was thinking about getting out of the industry like i was so burnt out I bet. going from these studios to studios and working on these projects and being a cog and and mm-hmm. i and for a long time I, I i i felt happy to do that like be the worker be keep my head down sure. not speak up and that's really changed in the last few years i've really kind of stepped into more of like a you know wanting to direct and uh getting yeah when you get to go on the mocap stage with like actors and you get to you know working working in cinematics is so fun because we get to take the script and figure out the blocking it's like stage blocking for yeah it's like mini movies Yeah. yeah and and getting to participate in that kind of fun and creativity all the time is like oh so cool the dream yeah it's really cool so um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rejuvenated for sure. Like, I mean, it's been a while now, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to feel part of something like that and that you contribute and that you're actually, you get to like yeah. make up an idea and like people do it Yeah, <laughs> if they think it's cool. Sure. People, people help you do it, you know? Yeah. Um, I love that. And it, it's so cool, especially because I, I find that the goal in anything creative, in my opinion, is fulfillment. Because mm-hmm. it's never about the end result. It's about the journey along the way. But the journey along the way can be horrible every day, just doing the work and you get yeah. burnt out. So if mm-hmm. you can find fulfillment in the creative process, there's there's nothing like it. It's like your spirit yeah. is operating on a higher level. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's not to say like, I don't ever want it to feel like every day is perfect. Oh yeah, of course not. Uh, you <laughs> know. Is still a job. <laughs> it's a job, yeah. Yeah. but obviously, you know, I think what it comes down to when it goes back to like that, that dream of Disney or this or that, or whatever that dream job is for, sure. for lots of people, you know, I, I just try to tell people to be open to there being a dream that you don't know about yet. And that, yeah. and that thing that you're, you you're banking on or expecting or putting on the pedestal it it it, it doesn't ever turn out well with anything yeah. with yeah. people with relationships with mm-hmm. uh work with expectations um putting things on a pedestal is 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 never good and 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 yeah. i feel so thankful however many years it was into my career to kind of discover something that i never considered um as as either the dream or the thing that i thought i would be doing but I guess my whole life has been that way. Yeah. I never expected to be an animator. And so then also now ending up in games and being so involved in them and, and really yeah. connecting more to that community. And I'm playing games finally again. I used to play like Nintendo 64 and then I didn't Same. play games forever. Right there with you. And now I'm like super into playing games again. I have to, I put my boyfriend to bed and then I play video games because he has Smart. no interest. <laughs> my wife's I, the same way. <laughs> I found the one guy who has absolutely no interest in what I do. So yeah, <laughs> probably best I mean, keeps you grounded, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's good. I I don't have yeah. to talk about work after work. So 
get it. <laughs> I, I do. I right think it's good. I'm my wife's totally a nurse. Kidding. She's yeah. the other side. Very logical brain. I was like, I'm going to go act. She's like, I'm going to go. OK, act. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go play pretend for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, all right, just be home by this time to feed the dog. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you figure yeah. it out. And games are becoming more cinematic. They're like movies and the level of story. Like, oh, my God. Red Dead, Last of Us. Yeah, it's just it's wild. It's a great time think- to be a fan. Yeah, it is. And it's a cool time to be working in games. It's a cool time to be playing games because yeah. I think games more than films right now are taking leaps and bounds. I think so too. I think all the exciting stuff right now is happening in games and, and we're mm-hmm. still we're still at the precipice of what it's gonna be. And yep. that's and that's exciting. Like Agreed. film, you know, I don't know yet what that big leap in film is gonna be. I, yep. I uh, it's it's tough, but, but games have so much room to continue yeah. upwards in terms of like, just how we tell stories now, how we, mm-hmm. how we, you know, we make these things are, are people, some people say like the Spider-Man game is better than any Spider-Man movie they'd seen Yeah, because one, it's a playable experience. The mm-hmm. cinematics and the story are as good as a movie Yeah, and it's like it, it's so cool and so all we want to do yeah. is like top that we want to like okay well check this out you know yeah. <laughs> um and it's super exciting and i cannot tell you how much we're like heartened and like encouraged by like this fan base we we love watching everybody's excitement about it and react like when yeah we, when we released the trailers recently I mean, we spend like at least two days at the studio sending each other like <laughs> reaction videos. That's awesome. And we're just like, look at this guy. Oh, yeah. look, she <laughs> cried or, you know, like something. It's so, but it, it like, it Passion. gets me like, all right, I'm doing it for him. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> he's going to love this game. That's right. um, Cause it, people really care about it and it's genuine and it's like, yeah, it's so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. So, uh, passion is infectious. That's how it works. Yeah. You're passionate. I will listen to somebody talk about something. I have no idea what it is for 20 minutes if they're passionate about it. Like, yeah. 100%. Keep totally. going, man. I don't know I what mean... you're saying, but I like it. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> built here with like, you know, yeah. your podcast of talking to different people and doing different things. And yeah. Um, yeah. I try. I try. I try. Yeah. But, and Ratchet and Clank, man. Ratchet and Clank is the only, might be the only series I've ever played every single game. Really? Everyone. Like, including, I, like, Secret Agent Clank on the yeah. PSP. <laughs> I've yes. beaten all of them. So so, uh, so you finished Rift Apart, I'm assuming. I haven't. I can't find a PS5. Oh, no. Where are they so at? You, so you haven't played it yet. I haven't. But <gasps> I'm, I am a black belt at spoiler, like, dodging. Oh, you've avoided. Okay, so I, I can't have, talk about it. Well, I, I wouldn't know. I don't even know what it's about. Because <gasps> I'm, like, okay. blind. All right, like, I won't tell you. Um. I'm very excited that like beside myself excited. It's really good. I can't wait. It's I watched not the trailer a bunch you. of times. And I was like, oh, she's got a robot arm. She's got a robot. Yeah. She's got a ball. My, my girl Rivet, who uh, she was very important to me. And you get a long where, message when I beat it. Just so you know, I can't wait to hear. I can't. I, I, no, I can't. I can't wait. I, I, and, I and I've gotten I've gotten so many nice messages like from people. Um, Good. Obviously, talking about Ratchet and Clank was something that really got a little bit more traffic and interest onto my Twitter. And um, yeah, Rivet as a character was so important to me. Uh, oh, I got cool. to work with so many amazing people, but especially women on this character. We kind of were just yeah. like. Nobody asked us to, but we were just kind of like, eh, don't worry, guys, we got this. Get like, it. <laughs> we yes. were like, yes. uh, it, it, she's just like, she's, she's a little bit of my heart. So I'm really Good. excited. I'm really excited for you to play. Good. I uh, can't wait. How I can we wait. get you a PlayStation five? Come on. I don't know. Let's, let's figure it out. Let's call some people. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make some calls. Yeah, no, exactly. I don't, I don't know anybody. Um, I know everyone. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just figure figure wait. it out dude because i will it's I will. cool and astro's playroom that comes with it yeah is so much fun oh, i can't wait it's like my, all my wait. mario 64 dreams fulfilled fantastic it's everything i miss about that game so it's just super fun and it's pretty quick i'm like platinuming games now i'm yeah, like a, I'm, like it. A, I'm like a real gamer now i think so, so. i think those, <laughs> i think if you get one you're automatically in 
like well, any rift, game. Rift Apart was my first platinum ever. Of course it was. Of so. course it was. Good for you. <laughs> I I worked on the game and I love the game. So awesome. Yeah. That's the goal, right? Oh, Do it's work so that cool you're to work of. on something that you like. I bet. It's so oh, cool. I'm so excited. And I love Ratchet and Clank because it gets so weird and like it's a disco ball gun now. I'm like, yes, yeah. just get weird. There's nothing wrong with just breaking all the rules. When I and when I talk about how fun it is when you get together with like a writer or whoever and you go, hey, you know what would be cool? Like that game in particular, because we could put like, well, this that would be ridiculous. It's like put it in the game, you know? What? Like it's it's yeah. That's amazing. How long did you, how long have you worked on like Rift Apart? How long was that job? Years I was on it. I mean, three years total. Wow. And it's out now. How does that feel? It feels good. I mean, yeah. yeah, Like you, and then, and then it's like, oh, it's gone now. Yeah. I miss miss it. It, it, It's yeah. It's probably one of the only projects that I'm like, trust me, I would, I would work on Ratchet and Clank until the day I die. I Hell love yeah. it. It's so fun. And I, I worked on the Ratchet PS4 as well. Oh, sweet. Great game. So that was my first one. And in college, I played Tools of Destruction. And I was, always, I was always like, Insomniac Games. Okay. They have good got animation it. in their games. If uh-huh. I ever got into games, that'll be it. Look at that. <clears throat> Look Manif- at that. Manifest. That's right. Future you heard that. Yeah. You're like, all right, past me. <laughs> done. Consider it done. Oh, I'm so excited for you. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be great. That's Is cool. Having now that you're doing, you say it's like a one to one, technically speaking, from like movies to actual games. animation. Yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. What is it now about games that like keeps you invigorated? Is it that you have more creative input and like can involve yeah. yourself more? Yeah. I mean, having, yeah. having creative input, um, the innovation that we get to do in our job rather than like kind of some unknown force handing down the assignments like sure uh it, it's just, it's just so collaborative and and creative which was you know creativity is intimidating to someone like me being creative sure. anybody i guess being creative on on call yeah <laughs> it's scary but if Perform. you dance monkey yeah um, <laughs> like That's i don't right. know tell a joke uh, uh, <laughs> <okay>. yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah no but it's you know when you when you when you get around people that you really like and you trust and and then you get to like you know make up fun stuff it's like sure yeah never there i there it would i have nightmares that i'm back in film and i'm like yeah. no <laughs> i'm like why did i leave <laughs> Uh, yeah. Is there an idea that you've thrown out that didn't work? Like you were like, that's an automatic no. Or is there one that you're super proud of that it did? Oh gosh. Oof. Uh, I, well, I probably couldn't tell you anything that I suggested, (laughs) but I suggested it didn't get in. I'm trying to think is, I mean, Hmm. Hold on. Like at which point are you grabbing my hand with the, Oh, this is my thing right here. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. When am I squeezing your hand? Um, yeah, like I mean, right here. really uh, rivet, rivet, yeah. like rivet. And there, the, and I, I, I will not say anything about it, but the very, very, very final cinematic Ooh, in the game. Okay. I, I, I got okay. to do the layout for, and, cool. I, and I love it. And it's, it makes me want to cry. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I'm just really proud of her as a character. I'm proud of some of the the early work I got to do with her and really developing her personality. And um, before we handed off scenes to animators and outsourcing and everything, um, and we worked closely with them. Like we actually worked as a team. But cool. uh, I got to kind of lead cinematics on that, and that was my first Ooh. time really. <laughs> working side by side with my lead, um, kind of supervising every cinematic in the game. And then I also got mm-hmm. to animate. And then I also built like wow. the character guides out for her. And I did like her facial expression tests and I got to kind of just help the preliminary personality stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm 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 so proud of the project as a whole. I'm super proud of her as a character and certainly all the cinematics I got to actually work on and animate. And yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that you're all throughout the process as well. 
it was cool. really cool well again that's and that's what's so much more cool to me about working in games sure uh, is being able to kind of go yeah now we'll do this and oh this okay i'll i'll help out with this let me do a test on that so we can see how that's gonna work and sure um yeah it's really so wow cool. <laughs> Wow. How, when you're watching back stuff like versus film and like games, because you have to worry about the gaming engine as well. Mm -hmm. Is that a hurdle that like you had to figure out? Like if it will render correctly, if that's the right term? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it, honestly, certainly there is like kind of higher quality bells and whistles and rendering in mm -hmm. film and but damn rift apart looks good yeah it and does. it's get and it's getting closer and closer and Ooh. um so yeah there's there's certainly sometimes i don't know it's getting so good now yeah <laughs> yeah uh but um you know with games we obviously sometimes the amount of cinematics that we're doing in a game is like three feature films worth yeah and not the amount of people on it so we we you know we're stretched more we're not putting as much detail into into the animation and that was something i had to adjust to our schedules mm -hmm. are a bit tighter sure um so <clears throat> you're kind of learning to do things quicker getting more output um but again that said Rift Apart looks really good. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I cared about it. And so you want to make it look as good as possible. And sure. Um, yeah. So there is, there is different uh, constraints and parameters and, and time frames and all that sure. stuff. So, is there any like <laughs> specific advice you would give to someone who wants to like get into games as an animator? Or like if there's basics that like you need to know these. And that will yeah. serve you very well. Um, you know, realistically, the the types of reels that do very well. So, you know, we'll look at an anime for an animator specific. It's 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 comes down to your demo reel. You know, we're going to look sure. at your reel and being able. One thing that was, I think, good for my demo reels throughout was I did have quite a wide variety of styles of types of characters. Oh, and so having creature animation, having human animation, showing that you can do action, showing that you can do more subtle performance and having a nice little variety of things. Mm -hmm. Body mechanics are very important to video games. So ah. pushing forward with that walks, runs, combat, melee, that stuff's going to go over very well. Less sure. than maybe a reel full of like quiet, dialogue scenes where they're sure. talking it's just not going to fit for our studio sure so sometimes we get demo reels from these super crazy talented people who've worked in nothing but feature anim their whole career but we don't necessarily know are they going to be well-rounded enough to you know do camera work to do action to do um you know, combat type stuff or whatever. Right. Um, so we love somebody that has kind of done, yeah, done a creature and then done cool walking and action sure. and this and that, but also can show that they can get detailed work in. So it's it's having more of that stuff. I okay. Think. It's like the versatility, but also the specificity. Like show range. <laughs> and cater your reel to the place that you're hiring because Ooh, smart. I used to have multiple demo reels. So if I knew the project or the studio was more cartoony, I mm -hmm. would send all of my work that applied to that. And ah. if, if it was like action-y mocap and, and the cool thing is Insomniac was a mix of the two. So, uh -huh. cause we have the Ratchet and Clanks and then we have the Spider-Man and right. Uh, well, at the time we had, did, hadn't done that, but they'd done like resistance and Ratchet and Clank and sure. and all that stuff. So my reel was, you know, had my action-y VFX stuff and then, you know, the Disney and owl stuff too. So smart that worked out and they just, oh, thank God they hired me back. Yeah. Then. The, <laughs> the quality of people were hiring now. I don't know if I would have gotten in. So. Sure. Hey, it doesn't matter. You're already in. <laughs> I'm yeah. in. They can't get rid of me now. <laughs> That's right. I it's have tenure. Senior. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have tenure. Uh, there's no such thing, but yeah. I'll, I'll vouch for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll just show up. You're like, who's this guy? Like, you can't fire her. <laughs> she has range. And, and, and lastly, I have to ask you specifically. Okay. I don't know if you can answer this. Uh-oh. What is 
the largest and or most pieces jigsaw puzzle you've ever put together okay uh i know right i know right <laughs> pieces oh i don't know i'm so my my sweet spot is thousand pieces thousand pieces that's what i've we're got at? Okay. i've got stacks of them that's like the, that's okay. that's the one i can get done fairly quickly mm -hmm. uh and uh and i i have one on my table right now that i just started Fantastic. last night i do them all the time <laughs> i love it i love it uh, i appreciate the research i'm here for you uh but yeah i i haven't ventured to um i've done like the single color ones where it's just Ooh. like one color yeah uh those are those are just in in exercise and endurance and yeah tenacity yeah and of, hope of try of trying to line up pieces <laughs> yeah. that kind of look the same so and then you try every one of those and yeah. yeah high risk high reward because if you're missing a piece that's how oh. murders occur Dude, I'm I'm doing a puzzle right now that is missing four pieces that I know that I threw away, oh, left oh in no. the bag, but I just put a little napkin over it and I do the rest of the puzzle because okay. I like the puzzle. Yeah. But, but looking at a missing piece is it, it's, I can do it. It ruins your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you what do you do you take them apart when you're done or do you glue them and frame them? Oh no, I just it's like I'll finish them and I'll be like I'm done and then like you know my boyfriend will be he doesn't do them or anything and then I just go sure. and I just oh, destroy them and put them back in the box and he's like Ugh. what do you even take a picture of them no Lindsay I just do I do them so often that like it's literally I did in the beginning I guess I got sure. way back into them at the very beginning of the pandemic and Makes sense. I was like hey I finished this one and that one but now I've done them all so many times sure <laughs> but I finally bought like a new one uh there's a brand called piecework puzzles and they have Sweet. the most beautiful Ooh. the boxes look nice too like they're all different colors and they stack and their Ooh. fonts are really nice so I like it I have them all in the hallway I've got like 12 of them now interesting do you have a favorite uh yeah Talk I'll to show me. you. Yeah, let right me here. see. Let me see. <laughs> here we go. I'm so excited. Ooh. See, I, I had puzzles ready to go. You I'm know. here for it. It's the this real one. reason I asked you to come on. <laughs> and I'm excited because it's the Christmas season. Ooh. So this one is called Punchline, and it's like a 70s Christmas dinner. I like it. Set up. Look at that. There, a lot of theirs have like food, and it's really beautiful okay. packaging. And I'm I down love with that. Them. Yeah, and that um, that's a thousand. How many pieces? This is a thousand. Okay. Yeah, I actually okay. don't like doing five hundred piece puzzles because I do them too quickly. It's too easy. You please get out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. I love how specific <laughs> of a hobby that is. Uh, I'm very yeah. into it. Well, my mom always said it was good for math skills. So she's right. I wish my mom had said that because I'm terrible at math. <laughs> I'm, not at I'm I'm not so great anymore, but I I think I still have a little bit of the logic left over. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Well, <laughs> hey, we've been talking for an hour and a half now. Yeah, I know. Look it's so late. It's so late where you are. You... Oh, that's fine. I go to work. In oh, yeah, you're day. right. You're going to go to work. You're fine. I'm keeping <laughs> you up. This is my then. domain, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> this was so fun. Yeah, thank you so much. I, of course. Thank you. You survived. Well I done. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. You're part of a very select few. Yeah. And, and, with the and with Jennifer Hale any, and, and Yuri Lowenthal. Yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah. wonderful person. Exactly. He, the greatest. The great. he, is, he, he is lucky. also one of the good, like we, yeah. we, we work with the best people in the world, the yeah. our voice actors. So yeah, I, again, I don't know how people keep letting me talk to people, like <laughs> you, but Hey, it worked. I'm very yeah. glad they've become friends, which is very cool. And this was so fun. The most valuable yes. thing you give someone is your time and you didn't have to. Well, so I really you. appreciate this. I had a blast. Yeah. yeah, this is wonderful. Thank you. Now, before I release you into the wild, I have to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Talk to me. Uh, Twitter. That's pretty much Twitter the only the thing I'm go. on. Uh, my, my tag is Benzimation. B-I-N-Z-I-M-A-T-I-O-N. Like animation, but Benzimation. Yeah. Fantastic. So, I yeah. love it. I love it. And...
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.